Did you know that Florida currently forces families and patients with unstable medical conditions such as epilepsy and violent behaviors to drive hundreds of miles in order to see their medical cannabis physicians in order to be recertified? Yet we are allowed to write for many other types of controlled substances, including Ritalin and Adderall via telehealth as part of the state law. Now, there are a couple of Republicans in the House and Senate of Florida who are trying to pass a bill to overcome this. Let's talk about it. Hey, everybody, it's Dr. David. So, of course, as always, please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Please hit us up on our other social media platforms. Now, I want to give a little backstory as to why this is such an important thing for me. Now, I was one of the very first physicians in the state of Florida to be certified for medical cannabis and to the best of our knowledge, the first pediatrician, as well, I've been told that I have certified more children for medical cannabis than anybody else in the state. Now, I also work with really sick patients, people with epilepsy, violent disorders, metabolic conditions, extreme anxiety, who need to have their medical cannabis in order to continue to function. Now, in addition to that, being a holistic physician who's worked with all different types of herbs through the years, this is stuff that I can provide acute medical management with as well. But there's a concern of being able to share that information by video as well, even if I'm not certifying, because those aren't clear parts of the law. Yet at the same time, I have also been using telehealth as part of my charting system way before anybody else knew how to spell Zoom as part of the pandemic. We actually had Zoom built into our electronic charting system in order to provide private personal consultations. So this is something I'm very experienced with, yet I can't do it for some of my most challenged patients for medical cannabis. Okay, now, as far as the Florida telehealth law, for all other circumstances, it's pretty simple. Medical, um, you can start a patient relationship even, you don't have to see them the first time, let alone in follow-up, using telehealth as long as the patient's care is not compromised by you not laying hands on the patient. So in a psychiatric condition or other types of pain conditions, that's something that you're getting history on. Of course, if somebody had asthma, unless they had a Bluetooth stethoscope, they would not be able to um, do that via telehealth. And of course, they need to be seen face to face. So now, as far as the Florida cannabis telehealth from very first day, this was something that was prohibited. Now, I actually went to the Board of Medicine um, meeting about about the whole cannabis laws and to ask this and speak about this very topic. And in it, I explained that there's absolutely no reason why we couldn't use telehealth in order to certify medical cannabis patients, especially in recertification. And the feedback that we got from the that I got from the Board of Medicine was pathetic. Their answer was, we're doing this in order to prevent redistribution of the cannabis of which I kindly said, how is me talking to them by video as opposed to face-to-face -face, going to stop somebody from giving it to somebody else afterwards? It was the stupidest explanation amongst lots of stupid explanations that bureaucrats give. I don't know a more stupid thing than that. It just made no sense whatsoever. Now, so this is what happened back in 2016. So here we are seven years later, and this has not changed. Now, since then, I have patients who have become homebound. They're too sick. They're too disabled. Their cancer is too advanced that they cannot make it to my office in the first place and they need to be recertified. And I've not been able to. And so they are suffering to their dying day because of this stupid law. Um, other patients of mine have to arrange for medical transport, which is from a cost perspective, from a use of the system perspective, from a logistical perspective, very difficult and additional burdens that these families who already have significant burdens because of their child or their adult child's um, condition, that they now have to go through all of this extra um, logistics in order just to do something that is completely not necessary. Now, as far as why is this discrepancy itself, again, there's no logical reason. It doesn't make any sense. I will do a, on every single one of our patients. I do a medical history 
How are things going since you've started treatment? Have you seen any of the doctors? Are you do, are you taking any new medications? Really wanting to make sure how people are doing. What are you taking? How much of it? Do you have any questions about what you're taking? Because I can do med management for medical marijuana the way that many doctors in the pain or in the um, psych world can med manage their patients. Again, I don't need to have a patient in the same room with me in order to do this. Now, um, we want to put together a plan that is going to be the most helpful for this individual. That's all I'm trying to do. Now, I can't figure out who this law is actually protecting. Is it protecting big pharma in some way in that some people can't get to their doctor, so they have to take other medications? I don't see how it's helping big cannabis, some of these big um, companies, because, of course, that would be helpful to them if the more patients were able to get their medicine. So, again, I just can't figure this out. So now comes up this new bill for 2023. Okay, and in March in Florida, that's when the um, the legislative session goes, and it runs for I think 60 days. Now a senator, let me get their names right. So a senator, Jason Brodeur from Stan, from Sanford, Florida, and Representative Spencer Roach from North Fort Myers, and doc, and uh, and Senator uh, Representative Roach was actually some one of the people who had been putting more restrictive things, uh, such as the uh, milligram uh, restrictions and such. So the fact that he's actually putting this forward, it's, it's it is kind of heartwarming, and I really want to put my take my hat off and thank you, thanks to any legislator who is willing to put their um to put themselves on the line to allow for something like this. Of course, maybe it's not putting themselves I can't imagine that there's many constituents who would say, oh I'm not gonna vote for this person because they're allowing telehealth for medical cannabis in somebody who's been certified already, because you know, we still would have to certify in um in person for the first time. That's what this law calls for. But really, you know, thanks a lot. And also, you know, this is certainly a law that I would imagine most Democrats in the House and Senate in Florida would be behind. This would be a bipartisan bill. And as we've seen with medical cannabis all along, it's always been met, it's, it's always been bipartisan. Let's face it, and it, even in terms of the electorate, really probably the only things more, if you look at the polling, the only things that are more popular than medic, medical cannabis is probably Santa Claus and Puppy Dog. It's a very popular thing in the state of Florida. Over 80% of constituents are in favor of this, and therefore they would be in favor of making this easier for the patient. Okay, so what can we do? We can get more involved. So Florida for Care. Dot org. So it's Florida, F-O-R, CARE, Florida for care dot org. They are the organization that is really spearheading this. And they're there. You know, you can give donations there. Um, you can um, contact your legislators to say, please vote for this once it comes up in, uh, in the committees, makes its way through. Hopefully it'll get out of committees. That's something that did not happen in the past. But we want to help move this along. And of course, the best way to happen is for their constituents to tell them about it. Now, tell them that medical cannabis, um, like every other medicine in the state, should be allowed to be used and, and certified via telehealth. All right. Well, thanks so much for listening. Let's make this happen. Let's make people who are suffering not have to suffer as much. Have a great day. See that subscribe button there? Please turn it from red to gray. 